Our second scripture lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 47 through 55. You'll find that on page 1589 in your view line. It goes like this. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. Please pray with me. Dear God, these words of Mary stir our soul. Help them to draw us closer to you and your peace. Amen. Well, the other day as I was driving home in my car, John Lennon's voice came on over the radio. It was a poignant moment. I was just right then driving past some lovely homes. They were all lit up with beautiful Christmas lights. You could see their gorgeous decorated trees showing through the living room windows. The snowflakes were gently falling. It was creating the most beautiful Christmas postcard scenes. So this is Christmas, John Lennon crooned. What have you done? Another year over, and a new one just begun. The song, of course, was Happy Christmas, War is Over. And as I drove home, I found myself singing with the children at the end of the song. War is over, if you want it. And I thought to myself, about how we all long so much every year for peace. Peace. At Christmas time especially, we remember the words that the angels say to the shepherds in Luke 2, so poetically translated in the King James Version. On earth, peace, goodwill toward men. We send these words to each other in our Christmas cards. We See them in decorations. We illuminate the word peace with lights. And today, as we ponder the words of Isaiah and Mary, we look forward to a time when all of those who are waging war all around the world can take their resources and build straight and level and easy to traverse roads for the people of different nations to meet and to know and to trade with each other rather than using our resources to build and buy automatic and chemical and nuclear weapons to kill each other. We long for the day when the words of Isaiah will come true and all the swords will be made into plowshares, when all nations are simply able to live peaceably, side by side, like a lion lying down next to a lamb. We long for peace on earth, peace between nations, peace within our own country. But that day is not here yet. As so many people around the globe every day get ready, aim, and fire at each other, all while screaming, peace! Well, we shouldn't be too surprised that the conflicts in the Middle East and in the U.S. and all around the world, in 
Paris and other places continues. In many ways, it's an example of what we all do. Whether it's two kids in the back of the car arguing over who started it, or a long, strained family relationship over an old hurt long ago. Or perhaps it's two factions fighting at a Presbytery meeting about the future for Camp Greenwood. <coughs> we as humans are continually fighting for our rights to resources. And we do that always in the name of peace. We're really good at holding up the errors of the other as an excuse for our own bad behavior. If you wouldn't do that, we say, I wouldn't do this. We demand perfect compliance of others, often through the use of force. And then we're surprised when it doesn't work. But the good news this Advent is that the peace which Christ brings is based on a completely different set of values. It's a completely new and different paradigm, other than fighting for your rights, dominating the situation, forcing compliance. The paradigm for peace that Christ has brought to the world is about loving and caring for the strangers, those who are different. It's about bringing the good news of help, actually bringing that help to the poor. It is about choosing to heal wounds and repair relationships. It's about cooperation. It's about working together for that common good that we all value so much. Well, after John Lennon had such a huge success with his other peace ballad, Imagine, he and Yoko decided to create a second one to be released that Christmas of 1971. In late October, they went to a New York recording studio to record the song. They had roughed in the lyrics, and a large group of talented musicians they had gathered all these people together, and finally on Halloween, they invited the Harlem Community Choir to come join them. And that choir had 30 children in it from the ages of 4 to 12. Their song, War Is Over, was not only a Christmas song, it was a heartfelt protest of the Vietnam War that had been raging since 1955. John and Yoko had long been part of the war protest movement. And three years earlier, in 1969, they had bought billboards in 12 major cities. They had printed millions of posters and flyers, all proclaiming, war is over in large, black, attention-getting letters on a white background. And then in a smaller message below it was written, if you want it. The billboards and the slogan were all signed, Happy Christmas from John and Yoko. Being inspired by that 1969 slogan to set it to music, the message that those two wanted to send was not a message to those who were suffering from war, that war is over. But it was a message to the American and British people, those who held the power in their ability to protest and to affect the actions of the elected officials. They knew that the way to stop the fighting was to get the people in power to agree to peace. But does that ever happen? Is that ever even possible? In Syria, in October of 2013, something very strange happened to the three armed groups engaged in the bitter ground war in Syria. The Syrian governmental forces, the revolting rebel fighters, and the local militias of the town of Sednia all agreed to stop shooting each other for three days. Now, as many of you know, the terrible civil war in Syria has been ferociously raging in that country. And there's been use of chemical weapons and atrocious war crimes all against the citizens there since 2011. In a response to the ongoing war, it is estimated that millions of Syrians have left their homes, their country, 
and they're now refugees in Lebanon, Turkey, Jordan, and Egypt. They're fleeing starvation, genocide, desolation on a massive scale. But for three days in October of 2013, all that fighting stopped. But this was no ordinary truce. The ceasefire occurred when all three factions agreed to stop shooting because a statue was being installed on the Hera Mountain. This wasn't just your everyday statue. It was a 280 foot tall monument topped with a 40 foot bronze statue of Jesus. The massive bronze Jesus statue is depicted with his arms outstretched like this. And it rises into the sky above the mountain that it's placed on. The statue was designed to be able to be seen all the way from Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel. The title of the statue is, I Have Come to Save the World. And it depicts Jesus stepping on a snake. Smaller statues of Adam and Eve flank the Jesus statue. And the story of how that statue came to be in that spot is the story of people working together over their differences to achieve peace. It all started back in 2005. An Orthodox Russian church, the Orthodox Russian church, which has close ties to the Syrian Orthodox church, began raising funds for this project. And then a Syrian Russian Christian man, Samir al Ghadban, created a nonprofit organization based in London to hold the funds. The patriarch of the Syrian Orthodox Church gave his blessing for the project. And he himself chose the site, the mountain of Herod, which he chose, which is on the ancient pilgrimage path to Constantinople. An Armenian sculptor was chosen to actually make the statue, and many delays occurred during the construction. When the Civil War broke out in Syria in 2011, it seemed that the entire project was going to have to be abandoned. But Samner said no. He was going to keep working on the bronze statue anyway. When the statue was finally ready to be installed in 2013, some years then had to somehow deal with all of the fighting factions in the area. His bold requests for a ceasefire while the statue was being installed were astonishingly approved by leaders of all sides, with religious leaders chiming in that this was a good thing. Farm tractors and a small crane were gathered and hauled up the mountain to use to assemble the statue. During the three days it took to install the beautiful piece of art, no shots were fired, and the installation took place in peace, completely without any violent incident. Today, five years later, that statue of Jesus is still on Harab Mountain. It keeps watch over all of the violence, that struggle for power and control, that is being waged below it all across Syria. It is a powerful reminder that we have the power to choose peace, and it's there for those who want it. So, this Advent season, what does this sort of peace on earth mean to those of us gathered in this room today? My hope for all of us is that in this Advent, this Christmas, we would look forward to bigger things than just our own family's interests. That we would take the opportunities that are available to us to broaden our horizons, to get to know our neighbors better. Not just the neighbors who are sitting in the pews next to you, not just those who live next door to you, those who live down the street, but people who live in this community, in Rockford, in Grand Rapids, in Michigan, and especially our neighbors who live in the rest of the world. I would like to challenge all of us to become interested in why people are at war 
and what exactly it would take to influence the situation to lead to peace. For if we are to live into the words of Isaiah this Advent, if we are to allow the love of Jesus Christ to settle dispute among nations, if we are to use the resources of this planet to build each other up instead of destroying each other, if we have any chance at all to work together for peace, it will begin with you and with I, choosing to do so, opening up our hearts to others, to start caring about and doing something to help stop war that's raging everywhere, around us, in our communities, in our country, and across the world. My friends, we can all work together to be the people of God's peace if we want to. So be it. Amen.